Colliders are a fundamental aspect of creating interactions in your game and understanding how they work is essential. So let's get started with colliders. Let's talk about what colliders are and why they are important in Unity. In simple terms, colliders are components in Unity that define the boundaries of our game objects and help us detect collisions and trigger events. There are different types of colliders available in Unity. Essentially, they can be classified into 2D and 3D colliders. Box Collider, Sphere Collider and Capsule Collider and their 2D counterparts are basic shapes that can represent a wide range of objects in our game. Therefore, they are commonly used. It is recommended to pick a collider for a game object that best resembles the shape of the object. Unity also has more complex colliders like Mesh Collider which allows you to use custom mesh shapes for collisions and Terrain Collider which is specifically designed for terrains. There also exists a Polygon Collider which is pretty useful for 2D games. It can be edited to form any shape within the editor itself. You can add colliders via the inspector and you can change the properties of the collider such as the size and the shape. This part is fairly straightforward. Again, I highly recommend choosing a simple shape for a collider that best resembles the object. This makes calculations easy for the computer unlike the mesh collider which can be difficult based on the complexity of the mesh. Now let's talk about compound colliders. Compound colliders in Unity allow you to create complex collision shapes by combining multiple simpler colliders into a single compound collider. Instead of using a simple collider shape that matches the entire object's geometry, you can use multiple colliders to approximate the shape more accurately and efficiently. To create a compound collider in Unity, you typically create child game objects and attach separate colliders to each child. Then you add a rigid body component to the parent game object to enable physics simulation if necessary. The child colliders are automatically combined into a compound collider under the parent game object. Just a thing to note while using compound colliders is that although it makes the complex stuff easy for us, it also makes the simple ones a bit harder. Allow me to elaborate. The physics and the collision detection part is going to be accurate, but let's say you want to do the simple stuff. A trigger detection using the on trigger events. We'll discuss more about that in depth later in the video, but with a compound collider, Unity, for some reason, decided to make sure that each collider would be able to trigger the event separately and therefore it may be called multiple times in a single frame. Don't worry, we would only need to perform a bunch of calculations and spend 24 hours on it just to open a stupid door. We will also look at how to work with compound colliders later in the video. But the main point being, if you could get away without using compound colliders, do it. It will save you a lot of headache. Only go for it if you want realistic physics calculations to be made. You can also create physics materials to add more spice. A physics material is an asset that you can create and you can use it to adjust how the collider behaves during a physical interaction. By adjusting properties like friction and bounciness, you can control how objects slide, interact and bounce off each other. For physics materials to work, you need a rigid body component attached to the body. I also want to introduce the terminology of static and dynamic colliders. Static colliders are colliders without a rigid body component, while the dynamic ones do contain a rigid body component. Static colliders means that they will not move no matter what happens, like floors, walls and buildings. Dynamic colliders will respond to collision based on the properties of the rigid body component and of course the physics material. Now let's talk about collision detection and collision events. Collision detection is the process of detecting when two colliders intersect in the game world. Unity provides built-in collision detection algorithms that work in real time. When a collision happens, Unity throws a bash of collision events. We are talking about on collision enter, on collision stay and on collision exit. They let you know when a collision starts, hangs around or decides to peace out. Enter, stay and exit. And the best part, you can tap into these events to create gameplay logic. On collision events have a parameter of type collision. This parameter can be used to get information about the collision, such as the point of impact and of course, the collider object. This is really cool. You don't really have to study the syntax. You can simply write on go in your script and Visual Studio gives you prompts to choose the required function and it auto completes it on its own. For on collision enter to be called, the colliders must physically collide with each other for the first frame 
during the current frame. You can use it to detect when a player collides with an obstacle and apply damage, play sound effects or trigger animations, etc. If the collision continues and the colliders keep touching in subsequent frames without separating, the on collision stay event will keep on firing. This can be used for continuous interactions like making a platform move only when the player touches it. When the colliders cease to collide and part ways, the on collision exit event jumps in, bidding farewell to the collision journey. An important thing to mention is that for the on collision events to be called, at least one of the colliders involved in the collision must have a rigid body or a rigid body 2D component attached. In other words, at least one of the colliders must be dynamic. It's also important to note that the on collision events are called on the game object that has the script with the on collision function, not on the colliders themselves. If you want to learn more about collision detection, I recommend checking out this video on rigid bodies in Unity because collision detection actually has nothing to do with the colliders themselves. They're controlled by the physics engine. So I highly recommend checking it out. Now we need a way to filter collision detection based on specific conditions. For example, we may want to check if it is specifically the player that is colliding with this object. We will discuss this in just a little bit, but first let's talk about triggers. Triggers are colliders that are designed to detect collisions without causing any physical commotion. Let's say you want to set up an event when your character enters a specific area or you want to detect when the player grabs a power up or you know interacts with an object. Triggers are probably the easiest solution to those problems. To turn a collider into a trigger, simply check the is trigger box and voila! Now they won't physically collide or get in the way of the other colliders. They're all about detection and making things happen without any physical fuss. Unity has three trigger events, on trigger enter, on trigger stay and on trigger exit. On trigger enter is called when a collider enters the trigger zone. On trigger stay is called each frame a collider stays in the trigger zone. And on trigger exit is called when a collider exits the trigger zone. You can use these events to implement specific actions or behaviors such as opening a door or triggering a cutscene. Unlike collision events, on trigger events do not have a parameter of type collision. Instead, they have a parameter of type collider. Because one of the colliders is a trigger, there is no physical collision happening. In most cases, you need to reference the components of the collider that hit the trigger and that's why the signatures are different. Also, the conditions for the on-trigger events to be called are the same as the ones of the on-collision events. In this simple scene, I have a player character and a trigger zone around a door. You can see that this character has a compound collider. I have attached a trigger collider to the door and I have implemented the on trigger enter event in my script. If you are only using a simple collider, then a simple on trigger enter and on trigger exit event should be enough. But because we are using a compound collider, things are a little bit different. Because compound colliders registers on collision and on trigger events for each individual collider separately, we would need to use a boolean in this case. Similarly, I can implement the on trigger exit event to close the door or perform other actions when the player exits the trigger zone. Just to make sure all of the colliders leave the trigger zone, I used an integer and incremented it on each on trigger enter and decremented it on exit and only close the door when it becomes zero. This setup needs more tweaking, perhaps a timer. Because I made a compound collider, there exist a lot of bugs just to make a stupid door open and close. Especially when you animate the player, it causes colliders to go back in and out, causing all sorts of headaches. Which brings me to what I said earlier in the video, use compound colliders only when you need to. You can see in this script that I compared the tag of the colliding object to player to ensure that it is indeed the player that entered the zone. There are different ways to filter collisions and let's discuss some effective methods one by one. Using tags. You can utilize the gameObject.CompareTag function to filter different types of game objects. This approach is much faster compared to using the equality operator because this function takes advantage of the fact that Unity stores tag values in a separate data structure and therefore it is indeed fast. While the other technique involves string operations. And I know that sounds too complicated. Essentially, using the compare tag function is faster in my opinion. Using layers. 
You can also filter objects using layers. In Unity, layers are internally stored as integers. So they are generally faster than tags. You can check for a layer using the following steps. You need to first create a layer index and use layermask.name to layer function to get that integer value of the required layer. Then inside the event, you check if they are the same like this. If you want to check for collisions with multiple layers, you can use a layer mask instead. In this case, you can choose which layers to filter in the inspector and then utilize bit masking and bit shifting operations to check for collisions. These operations are binary operations and are known for their speed and efficiency. Now, when should you choose tags over layers? In my opinion, you should use tags when you prefer a straightforward approach. If you find tags easier to work with, go ahead and use them. However, if using tags causes any performance issues, which can occur if you have a large number of collisions happening simultaneously, you may want to consider using layers for improved performance. Layers are particularly useful when you need to handle complex scenarios and interactions. Additionally, if you are using third-party plugins or other external resources, tags can be more convenient. However, if your project requires a more solid and efficient solution, layers are a reliable choice. You can also use the get component function to filter collisions based on components. This method is generally fast if you successfully retrieve the component. However, if the function returns null, it can be slower. This performance consideration is not that significant for games with simple collisions. However, for games with a large number of collisions, you may need to add a layer on top of this. Pun intended. This will make more sense when we discuss the best form of filtering which is using the collision metrics. To access the collision metrics, navigate to Edit, Project Settings, Physics or Physics 2D. Here you will find the collision metrics represented as a grid which includes all layers in your project. In the layer collision metrics, you have the ability to configure which layers should collide with each other. By default, all layers are set to collide with one another. However, you can customize the collision behavior by unchecking the checkboxes that correspond to the layers you want to exclude from collisions. For example, if you want to prevent collisions between the player and the player's projectiles, you can uncheck the intersection of the player row and the projectiles column. It's important to ensure that all relevant prefabs are assigned to the appropriate layers. Lastly, an important filtering method to know is the ignore collision function. There is a useful function called physics.ignoreCollision or physics2d.ignoreCollision that allows you to dynamically enable or disable collisions between two colliders during runtime. By passing in two colliders and a boolean value, you can control whether collision should occur between them. Setting this boolean to true disables collision, while setting it to false allows collisions. It's important to note that this function is not persistent. That is, if the game is stopped or a collider is disabled, the ignore collision state will be lost and you'll need to call the function again. Now, which filtering method should you use? The answer lies in a combination of these methods. I highly recommend always utilizing the collision metrics as it effectively eliminates unwanted collisions and provides precise control over collision behavior. If you are certain that a collider is exclusively assigned to a single layer, you can perform a get component check to filter collisions. However, if the collider could belong to multiple layers, using layer mask is a more suitable approach. Tags can also be used for additional filtering, especially during prototyping or when you prefer a simpler implementation. Tags are fast and can be effective in certain scenarios. To take your filtering to the next level, you can incorporate the concept of class inheritance. By implementing inheritance, you can avoid the need for explicit checks inside collision events, resulting in cleaner code. This approach enhances code organization and maintainability as well. If you want to learn more about this, I will link a video right now, which will show you how I implemented a complete collectibles package, which you can reuse in all your projects within just 10 minutes. We use the collision metrics over there as well and added the concept of inheritance to spice things up. The link will also be in the description. Cool. That's all we have today for colliders. I hope you have found this video useful. If you have any suggestions for the next component to cover, please let me know in the comments below. I'm currently considering the animator component, but I would love to hear your thoughts. Take care and see you next time. Bye-bye.